Hello everyone, this is Pras from the FPL Wire and welcome back to my team selection video for Game Week 13. Um, I'm doing this one a little bit earlier for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's a Friday deadline, so we didn't want to sort of all do them by Thursday, Friday. And then the second reason is we're actually also podding. The main pod is going to be on Thursday, so we thought we'd just stagger them. And actually there's a third reason. I've already made my transfer. So I just thought I'll, I'll do this earlier in the week and not sort of back end everything for later. Um, so I will get right into it. Um, starting with my game. So actually, it's not too far away now. I mean, the game week ended yesterday, so it feels more recent, and I'm happy to talk about this week. So um, again, very, very lucky, and I'm going to talk about this in the main pod. It's insane. Like, I'm actually... It's it's embarrassing, like, how lucky the Cunha and Sala in transfer for Haaland and Semenyo has gone. Like, it's ridiculous in terms of how well Cunha has done, how well Sala has done, and how well the captaincy has gone. Um, all I can say is I apologize to people who only have Haaland. Um, it's still not a bad move. He scored tonight. He scored a brace. He scored, uh, you know, in the game before this. It's just one of those things, but... Uh, Look, I'm, I'm, I'm the the thing I'm most happy about in this team is basically Saka. Like I feel that's been vindicated, and the fact that I got Raya, so the triple Arsenal that I have, and obviously we'll talk about Gabriel. Like today, there was a little bit of tonight. There was a little bit of concern on him coming out, but it seems very minor. So I will not dwell too much on it. And if if there is anything more, of course, we'll talk about it in the pod. But I'm assuming that he's absolutely fine. He was he was walking back fine. He was sitting on the bench laughing. Uh, and even the commentators or the writing, the people who wrote uh, the text uh, commentating on the game said it was very slight. So moving on. So I think Triple Arsenal, I, I feel good about. You know, Palmer, Isak, Blanked, I don't care. I think those are both good long-term picks and I was happy with both. Like Palmer almost scored. We all we all saw that Madueke clearance off the line and Isak got, I think, what, 0. 0.7, 0. 0.8, 0. 0.7 XG from the game. He was very good. He was very lively. So I was happy with what I saw. Slight concern with Wilson coming on and then his positioning. But I think overall as a pick with his fixtures, absolutely fine. And at his price, it's not an issue if anything sort of develops negatively. So no panic there. Um, Pinnock coming in with a clean sheet. So second week in a row where I've played a defender who's playing DCL and it's worked out fine. Uh, Everton are finding it very hard to score a goal. And if you have Man United defenders next week, play them. Um, so 84 points up to 55k and I mentioned in the previous video that my goal at the end of December was to enter the top 100k it happened within a week but look negative variance can happen as well so my still my goal by December is to stay within the 100k region and just basically consolidate now like it's not things can go wrong in just two three weeks we've seen that with the Haaland situation uh, Haaland to Salah situation the reverse can happen or something else can happen there's a pick that I don't have that that goes that goes berserk. Now, one thing I would say is I do see sort of a template forming. So it's going to be frustrating for people who don't have, let's say, a non Holland team that has spread the funds. And so you will feel either you need to take a hit to spread those funds or you need to go different. I would say if there's a template and you think those are the right picks, then don't try to force it. Like, let's say you want to go against Isak, I understand. Uh, but going against Palmer, don't do it. If you want to go against Saka, my personal opinion remains same. It's been the same all season. Don't do it. Saka is the premium pick. He was absolutely outstanding tonight again. Don't do it. G going against Salah, don't have to do it, especially if you're going, uh, you know, Haalandless. So I just think there's certain picks that you don't sort of mess around with. Apart from that, if you wanted to, let's say, take on Kunia and you wanted to have a Solanke, let's say you wanted to take an Isak with a Jackson, all of them are fine. So that's just a one, one word of caution as you think about your own team that play around with certain picks, but not not, not the other must-have picks. And I would put Chelsea Arsenal, like I've mentioned, in that category. So, uh, the video tonight is going to be short because ultimately I can tell you now. The first bench, Calvert-Lewin, he's out. João Pedro is in. I did that on Saturday night. I was fairly lucky with the games on Sunday, on Monday, even tonight, like my triple Arsenal played and they were, you know, Two of them made it, Saka made it, uh, and we'll see about Gabriel. Um, and then now I've only got Salah left tomorrow, and everybody else is done 
for the for the week uh, because obviously Palmer doesn't play European football. The Wolves guys don't play. Actually, Rogers also plays, but he's on my bench this week, which I will talk about. Brentford guys don't play, so I'll be pretty much done. So it's, it'll be just waiting for Dews and Gabriel, and obviously I'll talk about the implications. Uh, this is a slide from last week, so not to again go too much into details here. We will do an extensive discussion on game week 13, 14, 15. The time spans between it, who does it work out for, who it does not, what it means in terms of, you know, benching for certain players. We'll obviously try to estimate players' minutes. Uh, there are certain teams with two reds, like Liverpool, Aston Villa, Man City, that are playing Sunday, Wednesday and Saturday. Those are the ones that we will highlight the most. And there's other teams who have a very relaxed schedule during this period. Let's say Brighton is one uh, where they play on a Friday, then they play, um, you know, the next Thursday. So it's almost not even a midweek. And then they play on a Sunday. So, okay, Thursday, Sunday is still, still tight. But then again, they have weeks off after that. So uh, there's basically teams at two ends of the spectrum here. Uh, and I also highlighted, obviously, the Arsenal thing. So after playing tonight now, until January the 4th, they don't leave London for anything. For Europe, for Cups, for League, they don't leave London. So very big tick for X minutes. Uh, and then I would say, you know, Man United, Spurs, Chelsea, even though you see a lot of reds here, they're going to be rotating. They will not be playing their main teams in the in the European legs. So it's actually better than what it looks. I think the ones that need to be taken note of, note of is basically Man City, Liverpool and Villa. Those are the ones that I particularly see as slightly problematic. And then other teams like... Uh, like I'd mentioned, Bournemouth, not in Europe, not in Carabao Cup. Um, uh, your, uh, your Brighton, not in Europe, not in Carabao Cup. Newcastle are in Carabao Cup, not in Europe. So not as good, but still very good. Um, I mean, those are the teams that, that should be high on your list in terms of just minutes. And I have done an article, actually, quite an extensive article for the Scout um, today. It will be published tomorrow, so it will be sort of in line with this video where I talk about actually just some tips getting into the Christmas period. And one of the tips is just go robust. Like I was saying this in my in my uh, video last week as well. Go robust in terms of a pick. So I actually did this table today uh, for, again, the article, where I basically listed some players in Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3 by club. Uh, and it's simply based on minutes that they've played. So in certain cases, this doesn't apply, right? I mean, for example, you, you see here that Konza, yeah, you see Dunk, you see uh, Son, you see Isak, you see Foden, you see even Saliba, not in Tier 1 um, or, or even Tier 2. That's just because of either injuries or suspensions. But by and large, I think just going going through this table team by team and seeing some of the picks, like some, some picks were quite surprising to me. Like Kirkez for Bournemouth has been playing quite a lot. Like Semenyo is Tier 1. He's getting pretty much all the minutes. Uh, Ivan Nilsson is getting a lot of minutes. Um... Uh, Welbeck was surprising. Like He started all 12 games, played over 950 minutes, even more than, let's say, a Mitoma. Veltman was a little bit surprising. We'll see how that changes. So this was just some things that stood out, like Colwell, Jackson. These guys have started every single game, so these become more nailed. But then what happens in midweek? Uh, that becomes a question mark. But uh, this was the idea of doing this, just to basically put some tiers behind some players. Things change, right? Hall goes from Tier 3 to Tier 1, maybe. He was fantastic last night. So this is obviously up for judgment, how things change, how managers make their sort of selections. But basically, my idea of the article was avoid Tier 3. As long as you think that these are picks that continue to remain Tier 3. Uh, you know, I put Garnacho in this category. I put the, the, Ars the, the Liverpool boys in this category. The left winger for Arsenal, Martinelli, Trossard in that category. I just don't think you need to do that. Go there. Even even the city guys, like you know, Foden started tonight yet again, but ultimately for me he remains tier three despite him missing a few uh, a few games initially. Uh, now João Pedro is here in tier three, but I would argue that that was obviously because he was missing games and he should easily be tier two, uh, if not actually pushing for tier one. So um, actually closer to tier two. He's not still at the Welbeck minutes. Uh, we saw another example who shouldn't be tier three just because of the injury he he falls here. But this is just fact based. So getting into this week, uh, we don't have Rob T's numbers yet. So I'm going to use this slide from last week, which was basically from 11FI. And very roughly, I mean, these numbers change pretty much daily. So using last week's numbers are not really reflective, but just to give us an idea. 
So in match day 13, which we are in now, uh, you see Arsenal will have the highest clean sheet odds. Now, they're not as good as last week. They were highest last week and they obviously got the clean sheet. But 42% is decent. After that, nobody's over 40%. So this is another week and I've, this is becoming a theme now where I basically say, apart from Arsenal, pretty much everybody, it's it's a little bit hard to judge. So Brighton are second. Brighton and Nottingham Forest are joint second just because of their fixture. You know, one is home to Southampton and the other is home to Ipswich. So that makes, although Ipswich are very good against Man United. So Forest are also good. So I'm not going to sort of speculate, but uh, I, I think I would back a Brighton clean sheet a little bit more than a, uh, although Southampton were not bad e- either against Liverpool. Let's keep it at that. Let's let's trust the market. So so Nottingham Forest and Brighton are basically the second and third most likely, or joint second most likely. And then in the other top five is basically Man United and Brentford. So Brentford home to Leicester. Again, I'll be starting Pinnock. Uh, people with Flecken. I mean, hopefully we see a second clean sheet in a row. Uh, I'm rooting, rooting for you Flecken owners uh, with my Pinnock pick. Um, and that's about it. So um, below that you're not really looking at sort of huge potential. So then if you're playing that defender, it has to be on the basis of expecting attacking return. So therefore, eight Nuri is fine. But at 21% clean sheet odds, it's not really something that you should be expecting in terms of clean sheets. And then where is Spurs? I'm surprised Spurs are not higher. I mean, they did ultimately keep a clean sheet just now. 30%. So okay. Uh, home to Fulham, which is a decent fixture. Fulham have been good apart from this atrocious result that they had against Wolves last weekend. Nobody saw that coming. Uh, And then let's go to predicted goals. So again, this week, you're not seeing huge numbers like the over 2.5s, you know, when when a big team plays a very minor team. Uh, It's simply because, you know, the, the two big teams are playing each other and Arsenal are away. So that's where we are. And so nobody is that high. You have Brighton as the highest here, 2.26. So people will see Welbeck and Jao Pedro up there in terms of uh, when when the goal share numbers are out. I would still be skeptical to captain Jao Pedro. I know there's a mass euphoria in terms of getting Jao Pedro. I was one of them. I got him because I think he's a good pick for 5.5 million or 5.6 million. He d- it's, he's not a good pick that makes him a better captaincy candidate than some of the big hitters because ultimately there's still a minutes risk. He did get taken off on the 60-ish minute again. Maybe that was red card dependent, uh, but still, like I don't think that you need to sort of push it in terms of um, uh, in terms of getting him and also captaining him. I you know until he starts playing 90 minutes, if he ever does. He's not really in the captaincy conversation. I would say Welbeck maybe is higher. We'll see the clean sheet. We'll see the predicted uh, um, uh, predicted goals. But I don't know. I, I would worry uh, if I'm going for Brighton because there are other options, right? I mean, the second on this list is basically, who is it? It's Spurs. Um, so Spurs home to Fulham. I'm surprised they're second here. Uh, closely followed by Chelsea. So for me, anyone over zero, or actually Brentford is third. Uh, which is 2.07, closely followed by Chelsea, who are fourth. We'll see how these market odds change. But, uh, you know, for example, Brentford would slightly come down because now they'll have a new manager. So maybe a little bit of effect there. I'm still looking at Palmer. Like, I know Man City today, tonight did another going, f- you know, from 3 nil up to 3 all. Uh, I just struggle with captaining Salah home to Man City. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, it's something that I will consider. I made this team selection slide where I have Palmer captain and Saka vice captain. Saka was phenomenal. Um, and so he's also at the back of my mind. Uh, but then Salah is also good. Um, I think there's there's lots of options. It is going to be largely open, but I do feel sort of a lot of people will go Palmer uh, like myself because I think that's the logical best fixture on paper. And remember last week we were talking about the ceiling. So what what has changed like the ceiling is still higher for palmer here especially because it's man city now i'm not using the old man city um i'm saying yes man city is conceding a lot of big chances in fact there are a lot of charts to show that they're conceding up to three big chances a game which is huge but i still think palmer's ceiling is higher um so that's at least my initial thoughts in terms of the game week um and one reminder for the the sleeper Champions League game. I mean, I'm talking about the Champions League games today, and there was there were a lot of predicted results. I would say, apart from the Man City one, a couple of a couple or two others, but I don't think there were too many surprises. But if you want to get involved, you can with this QR code in the main uh, main slide, and then of course you can join our Pickham Premier League le- uh, league 
uh, Pick'em League. And if you want to download the app, the, it's the QR code in the middle. So the small one on the on the right hand side. Uh, and then there's the one at the extreme right, which is basically actually joining the Wire League. So coming to my team for Gimmick 13, uh, I plan to basically, this is going to be now my team steady state. Actually, no, next week I'm going to play Rogers home to Southampton. But this is going to be by and large my team. I don't wish to make too many transfers. A lot of the surgery that I wanted to do, use the funds from Haaland, has been done. I still have 1.1 million in the bank. Um, so there is still stuff I can do. And I will talk about some of the paths that I'm considering going from here until game week 18. But first, let's talk about the week. So I've got Ryan Gold. I've got Gabriel, Aitnuri, and Pinnock. Reasonable hopes with the defense, like I mentioned. I think Gabriel and Raya continue to have the best clean sheet odds. Like I said, look, I think Gabriel is going to be fine. Worst case scenario, Gabriel is out. If he's out for long, I will take him out for Timber. But again, I don't think it's going to happen because Timber looked actually very good as well. And if he's out for a very short time, I, I might upgrade Greaves for a hit to a to a Brighton defender like Van Heck. I have the money. Um, so that's basically the, the, the side plan if anything is wrong with Gabriel. But I, I doubt I'll do anything there. Um, and and I, I think he's absolutely fine. So that's the defense. Captain Palmer, Saka, Vice-Captain, Salah, Mbumo. Frankly, you can make a case to captain any of these four midfielders. Like, I have no... If you tell me you're captaining any of these four, I will not say this is this is stupid because it's close. I showed you the predicted goals. They're all between you know 2 to 2.5 or 2.25. So it, there's not much in it. Um, but like I said, I think I think the popular captain will start to become Palmer because people will start looking at the fact that he will not play midweek. Aston Villa have a game tomorrow. Chelsea will play pretty much another second team and it'll be this narrative that he's rested. The whole Chelsea team is rested and they're playing a Villa team that played midweek. Villa have a high line. Palmer likes the high line. I just think that will become the natural captain. But I can also see Salah um, being a popular one. I just uh, don't think I'll do it myself. Uh, I can even see a case for Cunha. But I do want to caution, like, Cunha is overperforming. Like, we can't just change our narrative from, oh, this guy is a good bread and butter pick, good on bonus, a lot of his stuff comes from expected assists, not expected goals. And then three weeks later, we say, oh, he's the best pick. He's getting double returns. Like, it's still Wolves. Bournemouth are a good team. I would definitely not captain Cunha. He's he's a decent player this week, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, Isak is also not a captain pick, but I'm very, very bullish. I think I read somewhere that uh, Crystal Palace are bottom three for XG conceded in the last six games. Now, don't quote me on that, but... Crystal Palace are struggling, right? I mean, they are conceding quite a few chances, and so I'm I'm happy with Isak. And then Jao Pedro, I already talked about as a candidate, a captaincy candidate. For me, no, but whether you get him or not, absolutely, I think it's a, he's a great pick. Some people have other good third strikers, like it could be Jackson, it could be Chris Wood who plays Ipswich at home. I think they're fine. Like, don't get Jao Pedro FOMO. Like, I was willing to take a two-week price drops on DCL because I felt I wanted to get the right striker at the right time. I think you have to do the same thing. If ja if you lose 0 0.2 of price rises on Jao Pedro, don't just get FOMO because of price rises. P play your player that you think is is better or is good enough this week and you never know what happens, right? Jao Pedro gets injured or there's another problem in your team. You just wasted a transfer this week for something else. So I would definitely say, wait, you don't have to get him. But if you do have a problem up front and you don't like your strike force, then you can do worse than going for Jao Pedro, who's dirt cheap and who has fi good fixtures now for the foreseeable future. So that's basically my team. And that's why I wanted to keep it short this week. The one last slide that I had covered for you guys here is basically just what happens beyond Gimmick 13. I like to, again, in my scout article, I talked about basically having some paths in mind. Like, where are you going with your team? Because when the games come thick and fast, right, and bandwagons come... People start going, red, you know, rudderless in terms of where is this team going? Oh, this guy got injured, so I'm going to do this. And a classic example is, let's say I'm going to take a random example, right? Mbumo gets injured in the next game. You could go two routes. You can upgrade Mbumo or you can downgrade Mbumo. And both could be right answers. So some per somebody will say, guys, who should you replace Mbumo with? The answer has to be, what path are you taking? Where are you going with this? Are you going to a place where Mbumo's position needs to be a more you know, more expensive midfielder like a Bruno, like a Foden, like a Son? 
or you're going to a place where you want to downgrade him because you want to afford something else. So that's why I like to have by position, what is my path and what can I do if something changes? So I have a few, I have like six paths here. On, and obviously in reality, they, they are many, many more because injuries can happen and, and so on and so forth. But for the moment, obviously, when you plan, you assume that everything is fine and what the picks you've made are all fine. And so that's my base assumption. So after this week, I think in all these paths, the one thing that is common is Pinnock goes out for a defender. So that's the first question that I will have in my path, that Pinnock goes to who? So I have 1.1 million in the bank. I, my cruise path, which is basically my path in which I don't have to make a lot of structure changes. I'm happy with having João Pedro and Rogers as my two cheaper strikers and midfielders who will continue to be like this. And I'll have one expensive or semi-expensive striker in Isak. So I'm not changing the structure. That's what I'm calling the cruise path. All I'm basically doing is going Pinnock to a better defender in Konate. And in game week 15, or maybe later, I do something with Mbumo because his fixtures turn. I could make him into a Bowen. I could turn him into a Gordon. He could become a Rashford. But something around that price point because I've used up my funds that I have in the bank for Pinnock to Konate. That's the cruise path. As things stand, I... I'm I probably I'm not on the Konate path and I'm going to talk about why. The next path is the Bruno path. So it's pretty much similar to the Cruz path, but here I'm not using my Pinnock money. I'm basic or I'm not upgrading Pinnock to a Konate even though I think Liverpool defense is good because I feel if I see in the next couple of games I will get the Europa League game, we will get the the Premier League another Premier League game. Uh, watching Bruno, if I feel he's somebody that I need to get, I will try to get him after Arsenal. So if if I want to go down the Bruno path, then I can't use up the money to go Pinnock to Konate. So therefore, Pinnock will become s some other defender that I want over the long term, but similar price, so that I can use the 1.1 million I have in the bank to upgrade Mbumo to Bruno. So that's basically roughly the Bruno path that probably I am considering more so it's between the Bruno path or the Trent path, which is the which is the next one. In the Trent path, again, I will not upgrade Pinnock to an expensive defender. I'll keep the money. And then by game week 17 or 18, what you'll see is basically Wolves fixtures basically fall off a cliff. So I'm going to use the Cunha money, the Eight Nuri money, and I'm going to downgrade Cunha to a Raul or another cheap striker, right? Raul Jimenez's fixtures actually after game week 17 are very, very good. So if he continues to get decent minutes, and for me, decent is 70-ish minutes, he, he shows that he's still, you know, doing the stuff for Fulham, I don't mind going back. I know a lot of people are selling this week, but things change. So there's a million and a half to make there uh, because I, I see Kunia to keep rising, I see Raul to keep dropping. Uh, and if that happens, then basically I might do that. And to also afford this, I'll have to take Mbumo down to an Eze or some midfielder in that price bracket. It could even be like a Garnacho or a Rashford, whoever is looking good. Um, that's that's where we are. And, and that would then basically afford a 8 Nuri to a Trent. So that's the other path. And this is why, because I like the Bruno and Trent path, next week I'm more likely to do Pinnock to a cheap defender than Pinnock to Konate. So that's that. Then the three more wild paths, basically, which is basically I want to take Mbumo up to Foden or Son. Now, people will laugh right now on why the hell would I target Foden where he's playing 90 minutes but doing nothing. But actually, Man City's fixtures after game week 17 are fantastic. And a lot of people are going to see that and either start to get Haaland FOMO or they might just say, look, I want some attack and Foden is not going to be blanking forever. So I just wanted a path open to see if there is a route I can get to if I need to go there. And that could be Son as well, by the way. It doesn't need to be just Foden. It could be a Son path. And what needs to happen is, again, Pinnock to a cheap defender. And then in game week 17 or 18, it's basically like the TAA path. But here, instead of Kunia, Mbumo, and Eight Nuri, I will do Raul Jimenez, Son or a Foden, and Anderson. Basically, again, tapping into Fulham's good fixtures. So that would be the Son-Foden path. So here, Mbumo would become the more expensive option. So this would basically, not to sort of brag, but this would give give me Saka, Son, Salah, Palmer, uh, Rogers midfield. So that would basically be <clears throat> one of the paths that I could take. The next one is a, a Rogers path. So if, if Rogers annoys me and, and basically he's, he's done, right, as a pick, and there's a cheaper Man United midfielder that puts their hand up, then I could go Cunha to Raul and Rogers to Rashford. 
in this case basically that you know that needs a couple of million so one of those million comes from kunia to rahul and basically i don't use up too much and go pinak to kunata and then the last one is the most controversial path uh maybe it's less controversial i may again i made this slide before the champions league game uh before people had forgotten that haland can still score points and so i did haland uh, a haland path and what does why would i do haland why why would i be such an idiot for for doing it because he's just shown that there are other picks and you can spread the money because things can change like i am trying to have a path where if there's a niggle if a player is out for a week or two weeks or you know something more and these players i'm talking about are saka pam or sala like s- stuff can happen to them right they could get a red card they could get injured and so what i want to do is basically have a route of what am i thinking because as soon as that happens if a palmer is injured the best captain becomes haland if sala is injured the best captain in a lot of weeks becomes haland so i want to have a route and this was the reason why i th- thought an isak route makes sense last week is because i can simply do kunia and isak actually even kunia doesn't need to go like isak and sala can become haland and and uh, rashford isak and um palmer can become again i think rashford is still affordable but even semenyo and uh, and haland you could even basically if you wanted to downgrade kunia and get raul so if you wanted to do it in three moves you can even get bruno like i can get sala kunia and isak to haland raul himenes and bruno fernandes like there are routes there that don't look too bad especially if something changes so i know right now it sounds weird but that's just how i think so i need to share with you guys how i think I need to know that I can get to Holland in two moves or three moves in a very very nice way if something changes between now and game week 17 game week 17 is far away things will change things will happen there's midweek games things will happen so some path may open up and in that case I'd love to jump on Holland uh, because he's got fantastic fixtures from game week 17 at least until game week 22 so after dropping that um little bit of a bombshell in terms of how Haaland could come back into my team I have to sort of finish by saying I have no intention right now to do it I just wanted to share with you guys I will revisit this slide actually closer to game week 15 or 16 to see how things have changed if there's another injury or a fundamental change in plans of course I will change but I'd love to see how this changes as the fixtures start to pile up and how paths start to emerge as we learn about new players new teams Man United for instance how we learn how Foden develops how Rashford develops how Haaland does how Man City do so that's it from me uh, thanks for listening as usual thanks for the love and uh, i will see you in the main podcast on thursday with late riser and so far thank you for liking the stream it's always a pleasure to to see the comments i will try to answer all the comments if you can subscribe as well that would be really appreciated there's a lot of viewers that that watch this video but don't subscribe doesn't take much i'm not asking you guys for anything other than just to subscribe so if you can i'd really appreciate it see ya